everybody, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. I am in my brand newly set up indoor seed starting area here in my basement and I'm really excited because I'm getting ready to plant my first indoor seeds of the season. Come with me and let's see what's up in the seed starting area. If I'm a little wackier than normal is because I'm just so excited. I love seeds, I love growing, I can't wait for spring. I know many of you are in the same boat. You're just waiting for this winter to be over. Puxatoni Phil didn't do us any favors last week, did he? So uh, yeah, so what can we do in the winter when we're just itching to grow something? Well, we can grow something, let's do it. Okay, I have made a seed starting schedule and I have it here on my official handy dandy clipboard and um, <clears throat> month, February, March, April, and May laid out so far. I'll do June and the rest of the summer later, but it shows in pink what I'm going to winter sow, and it shows in green what I'm going to sow indoors. Later on in the season, you'll see that there are some other colors that talk about direct sowing, but for today, we're talking about green indoor sowing for today. The schedule for today is to put up some snapdragons. Now you may remember I winter sowed some snapdragons. We're gonna do all four of those in seed trays as well. And we're gonna just kinda of see which one works best for my growing environment. Your growing environment might be different. So I'm gonna try snaps inside. Also today I'm gonna to put some radishes and some spinach in some soil. And then I'm going to, oh, we're gonna start some hyacinths from bulbs that I have stored in my refrigerator. So it's an exciting day today. Let's get going. Snapdragons, uh, these are the kind that are grown for cut flower gardeners, mostly. I am not a cut flower gardener. No, I'm not. I, um, I mean, I might cut my flowers now and again, but I'm not growing them specifically for the purpose of cutting and selling them as cut flowers. I'm growing them for my own personal enjoyment and the enjoyment of my friends with whom I might share them. All right, snapdragons, where are you? Where are you? I know you're in here. I know you're in here. There's, oh, they're gonna be in this box. This is the box of seeds that I have already winter sown. I didn't sort them back into there. That's why I couldn't find them. Snapdragons, here you are. Here you are. One, two, three, four. Yes. Four kinds of snapdragons I've already mentioned, but let me just say them again. Potomac apple blossom, Potomac pink, Madam Butterfly Rose and Bridal Pink. Okay, now these packets only come in teeny, teeny, tiny numbers of seeds per packet. It says on here that there's at least 50 seeds in here, but some of these, I think I over sowed the winter sowing, so I might not have that many to do in here. All right, so Snapdragons, yes. Also, somewhere around here, I have some radish seeds. Radishes, 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 radishes. Ha! Found you. All right, these are from last year. They're just seeds I picked up at uh, I think Lowe's. They are Cherry Bell variety of radishes. Oh look, here's another packet of Cherry Bell radishes. I think I got these at a garden center, and I think I got the other at Lowe's. I think they're the same, it doesn't matter. And then here's my spinach. These spinach seeds are five years old. I don't know what's gonna happen with these. I might not get any germination. I might get some germination. I don't know, but we're gonna try them and see what happens. And then we're gonna set the rest of these seeds aside. I should really turn off the lights. I don't have anything that needs them yet. So here in my handy dandy little seed starting studio. I should call it my seed starting studio. Yeah. All right. So the snapdragons I'm going to sow in the um, whatever these are called in these things gardeners supply growies self watering seed starting kit there we go I finally got there all right and these were used last year uh, so they're a little cobwebby. mess my first mess in my seed starting studio all right all right so the way these work is this is the bottom tray that is watertight no water leaks out of here um, you put the support system in next then you put capillary mat doohickeys in here and you fold the side down so that it touches the bottom and then you lay it across the top and then you put your seed full of seed your tray full of seedlings on top of there 
and then, uh, so when you have soil in here and seedlings in here, the soil touches through this big hole right here, it can touch that capillary mat and the water will wick up out of the reservoir, across the mat, up into the soil, and then the plants are watered from below. And you don't have to check on them very often. You should check on them. I learned last year, you should definitely check on them more than I did. Sometimes I let them go for like five days without checking them. Don't do that. But uh, you don't have to water them every single day. So that's good news. And that this is for after the seedlings are up and sprouting and growing and turning into plants. For today, we're not gonna use the entire system. We're gonna set this support aside. Stick it in there somehow. It's fine. We're gonna set the capillary mat aside. And we're just going to fill this with soil, fill it with seed, put it in here, and then cover it with the humidity dome. And this is how you get the seeds to germinate. But then after they've germinated, you take this off, set it aside, you put in the support, you put in the capillary mat, and you lift them up. Um, you don't have to do it that way. That's just the way Laura over at Garden Answer does it. And so I figure, why mess with a good thing? That's how she works, that's what I'll try. Okay, so I think I'm going to just do one tray of snapdragons because I have a lot of other seeds that I want to start indoors this year. So I'm going to do six of each type of snapdragons. If I have enough seed, I will um, sow two seeds per cell just to make sure I get germination on them. I think I will get germination on them, but anyway, that's what I'm going to do. And so that is the plan for the snapdragons. And then for the spinach and the radishes, I will use a regular 72 count cell pack. Hello. Want some uh, piping help? Okay, I'll be back in just a minute. <sighs> okay, I'm back. Uh, all right, so the radishes and the spinach I'm going to put into regular cell pack trays. I'm going to keep my self-watering containers for plants that I really, really, really want to take special care of and radishes don't fall into that category. Okay, so I need some soil. Soil, okay, so I'm um, using seed starting mix, not regular potting soil. Seed starting mix is sold by different companies. This one I think is Jiffy brand. I also have some Espoma down here and you probably can find other brands as well. The difference between seed starting mix and regular potting mix is that this is much finer texture. Um, it doesn't have any sticks or bark nuggets or any large pieces of material in it. And that way the little teeny tiny roots of your seedlings don't have to push their way around anything big. They um, can just really easily go through the soil and not uh, have any impedance. So I have this uh, bag from leftover from last year. This is the Jiffy brand. Um, I also have some Espoma brand and another half a bag of Jiffy brand. So I'm going to use what I have today. I'm going to get my soil pre-moistened. It's really, really dry. This has been sitting in this bag for a year. You see it's really dry and uh, so I'm going to get it pre-moistened and then I'll fill my tray. And this is why I bought these uh, plastic bins because they're perfect for this kind of a job. Okay, I'm going to use this water to mix up this soil and get it moist, but I'm going to move the camera over so you can see it better. So this potting mix is really, really dry and I'm using warmish water because in my experience, warm water soaks into soil faster and better than cold water. So this is just lukewarm water. I put in just about a cup so far, but it's not enough. All right, it's starting to be moistened and you can tell because it's starting to stick together. And get all the dry parts up off the bottom. Okay, so this is pretty much exactly right. What you want is that when you grab some and squeeze it, n water doesn't drip out the bottom, but it does stick together. And then when you just easily do that, it easily crumbles apart. So you don't want it really any wetter than that. And while I have the camera there, I'll just go ahead and fill my trays.
And I like to just tap the tray down onto the surface of the work surface like that. And that helps settle the soil down in there. Now you can see this is, in, is not as full as these. That's okay, it's all good. Now it's time to put my seeds into the soil. Um, I forgot to mention earlier when you're talking about seed starting soil versus potting soil, seed starting soil also doesn't have any nutrient value in it. And that's because seeds, because the way they are, um, seeds already have in the seed coating, they have every bit of nutrition that they already need so that they can germinate, sprout and grow and begin to grow their first set of leaves. Now the first set of leaves on a, on a seedling are not true leaves, that they don't indicate what um, the plant will be, but they are the thing that gets the plant growing and photosynthesizing first. And then it'll put out its first set of true leaves and then grow into a seedling beyond that. The seed coating has in it what it needs so that the seed can put out its first set of leaves. But once you see the first set of leaves, the baby leaves, you need to start fertilizing your plants so because the soil doesn't have any nutrient value in them. Now, you could choose to use potting soil that does have nutrient value in it, but in the early days of seed starting, it's really kind of not needed. And also, what comes in a ready-made potting soil might be too strong of a fertilizer for these tiny roots, and they might shock the plant after germination. So you could go either way with it. You could also plant into sifted compost. I tried that last year and my compost was a little bit too strong for my seeds and they didn't do as well as when I use seed starting material. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm using seed starting mix that has no nutrient value. Okay, so this is my um, bridal pink snapdragon. They come in a little glossine envelope and they're really, really small. I think they're actually smaller than foxglove seeds. Can you see that? It looks like my hand is just dirty, but that's actually seeds. So I'm going to do one row of these, bridal pink, and it's going to be this first row here. So I'm going to do my very best to put two seeds per cell. It's a bit of a trick since they're so small. and I think I had exactly 12 seeds left in this packet. That means that when I put them out in my winter sowing, I got 38 seeds in my winter sowing container. So a little overkill out there, but I didn't realize how tiny they were at the time. So this packet of seeds is empty. I need to get my labels going. And the way I'm gonna to label today is, let me think. There's 101 ways you could label. Some people put masking tape on their seed trays and write with a marker or a pencil what the seedlings are. Some people use plastic seed, uh, plastic plant markers. Some people use wooden plant markers, popsicle sticks. Some people label this with a number and then have a chart somewhere that says what number is what plant. Um, what am I going to do today? I'm going to go get my plant labels. Hi folks, editing Jenny here. Apparently I lost a little bit of footage or I didn't hit the start button on the camera or something. Anyway, the next little bit of the process, I don't have footage for. So what you missed is very exciting. I wrote out some plant labels and stuck them in the pot and then I finished sowing the seeds the exact same way for the rest of the snapdragons and then I covered them with vermiculite because the seed label said um, that they should be covered with vermiculite. That's all I did. That's what you missed. Back to regularly scheduled programming. All right, now I'm gonna mist them with water. All right, this is ready to cover with a humidity dome, which I will do right now. This helps keep the moisture in. It helps the seeds germinate as soon as the seedlings emerge in the majority of the cells, I'll take the humidity dome off. Now the plant packet, the seed packet, says that 
it's best to germinate these at 70 to 75 degrees um, temperature. Now, in this basement, it stays at about 65 degrees. So I'm going to put these on a heat mat, but I uh, don't want to over bake them. The heat mat says that it will heat uh, the plants about 10 or 20 degrees warmer than the surrounding area. So if I put them on the heat mat and the surrounding area is 65 degrees, then that could get them to 75 or even 85 degrees. So I think that might be a little bit too hot. So I'm going to keep my eye on these and see what's going on. Also, when you put things on a heat mat, they might tend to dry out faster than if you didn't have them on a heat mat. So I'm going to keep my eye on these every day for sure, maybe twice a day because I'm a, you know, overbearing helicopter plant mom and make sure that they're not drying out on top. But I think they're ready to put on the heat mat. Okay, I have one heat mat and I have not even yet plugged it in, but let me do that. Now this should start to warm up and then I can place my tray right on it. Now this is not a standard size tray. This is smaller than standard, so, um, but it should do just fine there. Now, Snapdragons want light for germination, so I will be leaving these lights on, leaving the heat mat on, but I'm gonna turn off the bottom lights because I don't have anything growing under them yet. You know what I just remembered? I forgot to put the bottom tray on my Snapdragon's tray. I just have the cell pack sitting over there on the heat mat, so make sure I put that in there. Phew, that would have been bad. Okay, now for radishes and spinach, I'm gonna use something kind of different. I'm gonna use these four cell um, cell packs, and I'm gonna put them into a large standard tray. Um, I'm gonna do, I think, probably do two trays of radishes and two trays of spinach and see how they do. I am definitely reusing um, planting trays that I have used in the past. Um, some people worry about disease transmission from year to year in their plant pots. Um, I live on a wing and a prayer. So I didn't wash my seed trees. Terrible. All right, fill these up. Alrighty there. What a mess. All right, so my radishes that I'm doing today are kind of an experiment. I wanna see if I can grow radishes in the basement to maturity. So I'm gonna plant two four packs of radish seeds and I'm gonna to try to grow them under lights for a month and see if I can get edible radishes out of them. This is just an experiment. I don't know if it's gonna work or not, but I'm gonna try. Now this says to plant them one half inch deep. So I'm just gonna make a little hole with my finger you could use a dibber, or some people call it a dibbler. You could use the end of your marker. You could use the end of a wooden spoon, whatever you want. I'm just using my finger. And then I'm gonna put one seed in each of those eight holes. These seeds are much bigger than the Snapdragon seeds. They're like a fat sesame seed, I would say, is how I would describe them. just like that, just gently. Say goodnight little radishes, sleep tight. It's almost time to wake up though. Don't get too much in there. All right, little guys. I don't know if this is gonna work. Have you ever grown radishes indoors fully, like under lights fully all the way? I mean, I'm, I'm, it might be possible. In the worst case, if they look like they're dying, I could always take them outside and give them the real sun because they are a cool weather crop. So if they um, sprout and then look like they're languishing under the lights, I could take them outside. They'll probably be fine. 
but I want to try this. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, labels. And now uh, I'm not going to put any vermiculate on them. I just don't think that's necessary. I did it on the snaps because the seed packet said to do it on the snaps, but I'm not going to do it on the radishes. All right, next, spinach. These are long-standing Bloomsdale variety, 45 days to maturity. I bought these in 2017, five years ago. So they might not germinate. I could probably try to germinate them on a paper towel. That might be a good method to see what the germination rate is. And then only put the germinated ones into the soil. I'm just gonna live like a rebel. I'm gonna put three seeds into each cell because they're so old and I don't know what germination rate I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna poke three holes into each cell. And I'm gonna put one seed in each of those holes. Now with these spinach plants, I'm thinking they probably won't wanna live inside as a crop inside. Maybe the radishes will because they're shorter days to maturity, but the spinach probably won't. So what I'm planning for these is that I'll grow them into seedlings and then I'll transplant them outside into probably a window box container that uh, I keep near the driveway. And that'll be my little spinach area if I can get them to sprout. We'll see. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with spinach. That's why I have so many seeds left over, but we'll see. Now, I think you can also grow um, spinach in microgreen style, like you just really lay them really thick and then you cut them um, off for microgreen salads and things, toppings for your burgers or whatever. Um, so that might be another way to go. Okay, so radish, spinach. Radish, I'm gonna to try to grow indoors the whole way. Spinach, I'm gonna grow into seedlings and then transplant outside. I'm gonna spray them both in, settle the soil around the seeds. I still have plenty of room in this tray that I'll be able to put other things in as my seed starting schedule commences throughout the rest of the spring. But for now, this is all I need. These do not need light to germinate, so I am going to probably put them on the on the bottom row where I have the lights turned off and then when they do germinate I'll um, turn the lights on okay so uh, that's the seedlings under some under the lights some not under the lights now the last thing to do is my hyacinths that's exciting You guys might remember last fall as I was planting my bulbs, I put some into pots. I have some of those pots outside on the patio and they're gonna just bloom when they're gonna bloom. But I have these hyacinths that I potted up in this, in this uh, container and I wrote on the top, take out in mid-February. I say February 5th is close enough to mid-February. I want these sooner rather than later. And, oh, I see one of them poking up. Oh, I see another one of them poking up. All right, so all I'm going to do now is set these under these lights and they are going to come up and they should turn into beautiful flowers in just a few weeks. So, yay, I'm so excited. Put you under here, little guy. Grow, 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 you can do it, you can do it. All right, and then I also have these in this bag that I didn't plant up yet. These are some that I'm going to force in uh, a different way. I'm gonna put these into the jars and I might plant some of these into smaller containers, but also you can succession plant these. So I'm gonna take out, I think, let's try just two for today. I'm gonna pick out two bulbs. It doesn't matter to me which ones, but I see one that started to sprout. So I'll just go ahead and pick that one. Are there any others? Yeah. Get one of the ones that's already started to sprout that way. It doesn't have to hold for too much longer. The rest of these are going back into the refrigerator to hold off until I want them out. 
Now I'm going to force these two and then in two weeks I'll start some more and then in two weeks after that I'll start some more. So I should have hyacinths all spring. So first of all this hyacinth forcing thing is probably enough information to make its own video. So when I do the next um, uh, successions of my hyacinth bulbs I will probably do a hyacinth only bulb forcing video and that'll probably come in a couple of weeks but for now because I'm down here and I'm excited to be in my plant studio uh, I figured maybe I should just go ahead and do this it's on the schedule after all and I already had the camera rolling so here we are okay so there's two main ways of course there's a hundred ways to do anything but the two primary ways of forcing bulbs is really a lot like an uh, amaryllis Amaryllis are, after all, just a big flower bulb. So hyacinths, tulips, muscari, or grape hyacinths, a lot of the spring flowering bulbs are the same way. You can force them with the same methods. Um, so I'm going to show you two methods today. One is going to be in a pot with potting soil, and the other is going to be in a forcing jar. Now this is what's called a hyacinth jar. And I'm sure you can get these in other sizes and shapes. I think you can get them for amaryllis. You can probably get them for tulips probably anything you want. I don't know. The internet's a big place. Um, so these jars are what my forced hyacinths came in when I bought them myself at the grocery store a couple of years ago. They came in this jar and it was like, I don't know, 10 bucks for something like that. The idea is you put water into the jar just up to the top of the neck. And then you set your hyacinth bulb down in there. This is the root side. This is the sprout side. Sprout side up, root side down. And you let it sit just touching the water. And then you just let it sit there. And the roots will start to sprout and grow down in. You'll see the roots in this container. And then keep the water at that same level. Check it pretty frequently, especially in the early days. Keep the water there. F refresh the water too. You can take it out, refresh the water, and put it back in. That's all fine. Um, and then the bulb will start to send up its shoot, its leaves, and its flower bud. And as soon as it starts to flower, you can just put it wherever you want in your home. In the meantime, you can put this on a sunny windowsill, you could put this in a bright location, or I'm going to put mine under my lights. Since I have my lights going, I might as well use it. That couldn't be any easier. Now, if you don't like the way the roots look in that clear container, I bet you could find uh, opaque containers that do the same function or you could fill that container with uh, pea gravel or decorative marbles or you could wrap that container in some cloth with a ribbon or use your imagination. <laughs> the sky's the limit for floral design but that is just the simplest basicest way. Basicest. Not a word. Um, anyway all right so that's method number one. Method number two I'm going to pot one up in a container very similarly again to what I did with my amaryllis last November but now I'm doing it today with a hyacinth. I'm going to put some potting soil. This is not seed starting mix now. This is potting soil. It does have some nutritional value to it. Put some potting soil in there. Uh, about that much. And I'm going to set my bulb down in there and press it in firmly. Don't smoosh it, but press it firmly. And now I'm just going to tuck potting soil around the edge of the bulb. I don't want to cover it all the way. I just want the top third of the bulb to be showing. I want there to be enough soil in there that the bulb doesn't fall over once the stalk starts to grow. And that's it. Pretty easy. Now this soil is already moistened, so I don't need to water it in right now, but I'll keep an eye on it and I'll keep the soil moist, but not soaking. We don't want the bulb to rot. But as you can see, it's already started to sprout. And so I don't think it's gonna rot. I think it's just gonna get pretty busy growing pretty soon. And then again, I'm just gonna set this under the light and away it goes. So hopefully just, just a few weeks from now, we'll have a full tray of beautiful hyacinths plus two little individuals and you can give those away as gifts or you can put them on a sunny windowsill or by your bedside or wherever you want to enjoy your hyacinths. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I'm going to make the clay pot look a little bit nicer. I'm just all about forgetting things today. And I'm going to put some sheet moss around just because, just for fun. So there, now you're ready little guy. Okay, I'll clean up my mess. 
And with that, the official kickoff of the indoor seed sowing season at Harmony Hills has begun. We've got snapdragons, we've got spinach and radishes, we've got forcing hyacinths, and I couldn't be more excited. Thanks so much for joining me. Put in the comment section down below what you're growing indoors this year. And have you gotten started yet or are you waiting patiently for the time to come? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. I will see you in another video really soon, friends. Take care, bye. Are you growing yet? Have you sprouted? Wake up, little Susie, wake up. Oh, you're very cute. How about now? <laughs>